everyone. Katrina's here. How are you today? It's Friday and it's five o'clock. Oh my God, you're probably hopefully already checked out for the weekend, but maybe not. Some of you are lingering or you're going to check back in later tonight after a couple glasses of wine. I don't know, but I wanted to come on today and talk about some things that uh, I see in a lot of clients and people that I'm talking to lately and even in myself. Okay. True confessions. True confessions, are you overwhelmed right now? Do you have a long to-do list? Have you been putting things off that you know that you should be doing? And is that because you have too many things on your to-do list and you can't get to them all? Um, I know, I feel your pain. <laughs> uh, and uh, life sometimes gets in the way, people get sick, uh, traveling, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of that today. First of all, I want to celebrate that we are, hey Barbara, how are you? Uh, I want to celebrate you. Sometimes we don't stop and celebrate the things we do get done often enough. And you need to pat yourself on the back and say, yay me, this is what I did this week. Oh, Barbara, you're overwhelmed. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, Rochelle. Uh, Pat yourself on the back, please. Think about all the things you did get done. Look at your to-do list and all the things you checked off, perhaps. Uh, or think about the things, even if you got an email out to your list this, this week, if you did a Facebook Live, if you got three posts out on social media, if you sold somebody into a program, product, or service this week, you need to celebrate it. Sometimes we don't stop and celebrate the, even the little the successes that we have because we have such a huge long to-do list that we feel like we're not getting anywhere. We're not getting any headway. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to remember to celebrate your successes, whether they're big or small, it doesn't matter. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about today. It's Friday, so please give yourself some, uh, some kudos, some gratitude, and um, just all around, um, make yourself feel good. I mean, you should feel good because you probably did have more of a productive week than you think. So how do we tackle, though, this huge long to-do list, right? And trust me, it's not always on one piece of paper. I have a list on various little sheets of paper <laughs> on my desk, and you should see my desk. I know I look really organized with all my books all lined up up here, and I am. I'm a super organized person, and that's how I get more done, but my desk is like a follow-up uh, to-do list in itself uh, with some piles. So I'm just being honest. And uh, hey, Fee, uh, nice to see you guys. Oh, good, Barbara, you're celebrating, awesome. And uh, so what I want what I say to clients, and I say this, I have to say this to myself all the time, is I, there's no humanly way that I can get everything on my to-do list done that I want, okay? I might think it's only three things today, but writing an entire book or writing an entire program or creating a whole new website is not one to-do list or one item on your to-do list. So sometimes we have un, um, realistic, unrealistic uh, expectations of what our time is allowed. Plus we've got an, a meeting here and a, an event here and um, a couple calls or whatever. And so there's really only that two or three hour window, hopefully, where you have to yourself every day or maybe even once a week if you have a job or other things you're just packed solid. Um, you might only have a couple hours a week to work on the business uh, and get some of these to-do things done. Um, but so have the expectation of what is a realistic time frame that you're going to be able to get some of this done and then prioritize them a little bit better. So perhaps like there was a deadline for something that I had to submit to somebody today at noon, right? Or I wasn't going to get included and get exposure in this thing with 90 people. And, and so I'm like, Ooh, I need to make sure that gets done before noon because I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Uh, speaking gigs. If you're looking for speaking gigs, Sometimes there's deadlines for call for speakers and you have to put those reminders on your calendar or do them right away when you see them because you can't miss opportunities like that, right? So make sure you're really doing the, the most important things first. So for right now, it's five o'clock on a Friday. My family is actually, my kid and my husband are still at karate and 
I have 14 tabs open on my computer screen and so many unread emails it's not even funny because I was gone for like six days. I still haven't gotten through all the emails from when I got back on Wednesday this week. And um, hey Reno, hey Jill, uh, we're talking about overwhelm, to-do lists and what to do about it. Uh, and so, you know, having Friday at five o'clock, what do I want to do? I want to take off, go make dinner, hang out with my family as soon as they get home. Um, and I will, I will, but I want to fix, I, I actually work really well under pressure. So if I know I have 20 minutes left, I'm going to hammer through some of these to-do lists. Whereas if I have a two hour block, I will just sit on Facebook and see what's going on, seriously, instead of making, uh, so this is where it talks about what are you putting stuff off, right? Some of us procrastinate some of the things we don't want to do, or maybe we don't know what to say in an email, or we don't know what to do. So I'm creating this video today because I know I have to get an email newsletter out, frankly. And I want to give some tips on getting through, giving yourself a break, so to speak, with the to-do list. And not reprimanding yourself for not getting it all to done in you know, in the time period that you think is going to be important for you. So give yourself grace. Don't get frustrated. Uh, stop feeling guilty for not getting stuff done in, in the manner that you want, but be more realistic for what's really possible for you in your time, right? And if life happens, like someone dies or, you know, the kid sprains her ankle or, you know, you have to get called away for some emergency, then some things are going to need to get put off till next week. You don't just keep working till midnight, people. That's just not going to be healthy or anything for, it's not going to be productive, right? Um, I don't work till midnight, but, but some, my husband's been giving me crap lately because in one of my books, and I don't remember which one it is, but in one of my books I say, I don't work sometimes. I don't work before 9 or 10 in the morning, and I don't work past 6 o'clock at night. And he's been calling me on my shit now for the last couple of days because um, I've had some 8 o'clock meetings or 8.30 meetings. And, you know, because it's conference season, September, October, I've been traveling a lot. And so I've had to expand the hours and the, what I've been able to take some calls for the days that I am here because I don't like to take calls when I'm not here. Uh, when I'm out of town, I like to unplug in a way and stay in the moment and stay in the energy of whatever it is I'm doing in uh in, in the trip. So if that's you, then just know that you have more limited time to schedule calls or joint ventures or uh, podcast interviews or speaking gigs or to do the work on your business. So make sure that you structure in time for uh, family though and your personal care too. Um, and speaking of structure, let's talk about that for a while. I, uh, <clears throat> it's still it still is amazes me. I'll say amazes. It still amazes me that people will not show up for a call or will. Hi, Pat. How's it going? Uh, it still amazes me that people will not show up for a call or they'll miss something or they'll forget they scheduled something because they don't look at their calendar. I don't understand if you're in business how you cannot look at your calendar every day. I don't understand that. I just baffles me. Um, so if if that could be remotely you, please make sure that you figure out the calendar schedule that works for you, whether it's paper or online. It could be your Outlook calendar. It could be your iCalendar. I prefer to like a uh, Google calendar because it works on every single computer or t uh, technology that I'm ever going to need. Even if I'm without my phone and without my computer, I can go to a hotel computer and check my Google Calendar at any time. And another little trick I do is if I'm going to an event, and this I see all the time because I have events, right, in uh, California, and people will always ask me the day before or sometimes even the morning of the event, where's the event, where do I need to go? And I'm like, wait, you planned this for a couple months now, and you had to even take a plane here or whatever, and you don't know where to go? like. I don't mean to give people shit, but you need to you need to keep stuff organized, people. So, like, let me just give you a trick. So, in my Google Calendar, and I can't share my screen with you. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Maybe there is no option yet, but 
<laughs> um, I would. Uh, but you open up your Google Calendar and say I'm going to an event this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then I would put the, the event in there as an all-day event, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it would mark me as busy, right? So nobody can book a call during that time. And then if I booked a flight, I would take the flight information and the confirmation and I would stick it into that calendar entry. I would take the hotel information and the confirmation for the hotel room and put it into that ca uh, calendar entry. And so I would have the hotel, the flight, and also the event information. So the hotel or the times, the agenda. Um, even I'll put in, like if I have a roommate in the hotel, who the roommate is and their cell phone, I will put um, uh, who I'm gonna meet there. Like sometimes I'm going off to a different city and I've been messaging with people on social media and whatever, and so-and-so says they're gonna be there too, and I'm like, oh, we should meet and, and catch up. So I'll take that person's name and or their Facebook page link, uh, their profile link, and I'll stick that in the calendar listing as well, so I, people I wanna meet up with. And I'll put them in here so that when I get there, I'll open it up and I'll say, oh yeah, I wanted to connect with so-and-so and so-and-so so that I can watch for them when I'm there, because I'm sorry, but I'm almost 50, <laughs> and I don't have, I have the memory of like a fly. I don't even know. So it, I have to write everything down, and, uh, and, and really, so, that is like the simplest, that's just one thing that I do in my calendar that can make your life so much easier. And honestly, sometimes I don't even look at that until the day before. Okay, when do I need to check in? When's my flight? I pull up the event, I check in to, you know, I get an Uber or Lyft or whatever, and I don't even know what hotel I'm at half the time until I actually fly into the city and go, okay, where am I staying? And it's all on my calendar, you guys. So the reservations there, everything's in there. So I'm just saying that being more organized is probably one of the single most important things that can help you, uh, stop you from being so overwhelmed, but also can help you um, achieve more things on your to-do list. It can help you from not putting some things off perhaps, and it can help you have just a more pleasurable experience in your day-to-day -day life, let me tell you. Uh, so hey Colleen, hey Sarah, hey Ted, nice to see you here. And Jill says, how do people not do what you're saying? Easy, breezy, beautiful. Thank you. Thank God for technology, everything at our fingertips. Yes, I am so with you, Jill. I don't understand that either, but um, the Google Calendar is my best friend, and I look at it the night before to make sure I know when I need to get up, because some people will say, oh, I didn't come to my computer until 10 o'clock, and we had a 9 o'clock call. Well, why didn't you know the night before? I don't understand that. You should look and see when you have to be somewhere the night before, before you start your day. Now, I've missed an appointment here and there, but in 17 years, probably not more than I can count on one hand, okay, because I'm super organized. So, okay, so for those of you who get that, well, that's great for you, Katrina, but I'm not super organized and I never will be. Well, that's a choice that you have, I would say. Yes, some of us have ADHD, PSD, ADD, all these different Ds. Um, you might have something like that but you can set reminders for yourself. You can set yourself up for success, you guys. You really, really, really can. With whether it's a sticky note or a cell phone reminder or something, or something that sets reminders for you on a daily basis at, say, at six o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night and says, remember to look at your calendar for tomorrow's schedule. And I'm serious. So it sounds like the simplest thing. And some of you are probably already doing this. Um, but those are some of the things that I wanted to just share today, and I and I will, full confession, I will admit that I've been putting some stuff off too. One of the biggest things I teach is follow-up, follow-up marketing. And I have been to so many events, like so many events, you've probably seen a lot of the pictures on Facebook, um, that I am buried, I'm literally buried in follow-up. <laughs> and, uh, which is a good thing, it's a good thing to have a bunch of leads and stuff, uh, events that I've spoken at, uh, been an exhibitor at or just attended and I come home with these stacks of uh, business cards or uh, drawing slips and things like that or even order forms the order forms when you get into the computer because that's money right um, and then I have a system I have a tons of systems you guys and I have a team but I am honestly I'm looking for a new um, a couple new people for my team so if you have some good VAs depending on what they're they're due um, I am looking to grow my team. Now, I have been in business for a long time and I don't take 
I don't take newbies. I don't have time for people who need to have a learning curve. I don't have time for people who have uh, sensitivities, um, uh, who are sensitive about me telling them to do things and shooting them off just emails like this. I do not add fluff to my emails. I will just tell you. I do not say, oh, how are you doing? How's the weather up there? How's the kids? And da 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 And then ask you something to do. I will say, key to this for me, thanks. Key to this. Sometimes I don't even say thanks. But I really mean thanks. And it's not that I'm not thankful. It's just I got too many things on my list. I just got to boom, 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 boom. Get them out. So someone's sad facing me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's sad facing me? I know. Probably because I don't say thanks. Um, but my assistants know when they hire me, like, I'm just a really busy person, and I, I will totally thank you on occasion and, and all that. It's not that I'm mean. I'm not mean. I just need someone who's not going to take offense to that. And then secondly, if you, don't, if you can't pay really close attention to detail, I don't have time for that. Like, if, you, if I ask you a question and you just send me some, like, to do some research and you send me a link to the page to go look at my own research, I'm like, no, 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 no. I need you to summarize the page for me and put it into a couple bullets and send me that, right? I need someone who's really going to take stuff off my plate. And so I'm looking for those kinds of my assistants. Uh, Pat, you were sending me <laughs> sad faces. Okay, great. But thank you. You have changed my life because of this one thing, this calendaring. Okay, good. Because you do have a full-time job, and it's not easy to have a full-time job and really ramp up a business to where you're making a lot of money so you can quit the full-time job, right? There's so much to do, you guys, uh, when you're ramping up a business. And there's so many expectations out there. Other coaches will tell you that, oh, it's easy. Just do this, this, this. And, and it's not that easy. I'm sorry. I have a three-year entrepreneur evolution plan. There is a lot to set up and do in structure, in, uh, in the structure of your business, the systems, uh, the technology, the website. The website needs to be the hub of your business. You need to have some organization going on. You need to make sure you know what to do for revenue generating activities every week. It takes three, like honestly, I've only seen it a few times where someone really ramped up a business to six figures and beyond within a year. They are few and far between, you guys. So don't don't get too excited when someone says, oh yeah, you can do six figures in a weekend or you can do it in a year, no problem. The majority of people do not do that. Is it possible? Yes, but just let's set realistic expectations for yourself for what you're going to accomplish, how fast you're going to accomplish it based on your lifestyle, based on what's going on with you uh, in your life, you, what, what else you have on your plate. Some people that I work with have six or seven kids, for God's sakes. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. Uh, you know, I have one kid. And uh, <clears throat> anyways, so <sighs> I know I talk really fast. All right, I'd love to find out what's going on in your world right now. Tell me what, what you guys are up to. Tell me what you got planned for this weekend. How you're, you know, do you take time off to enjoy yourself and your family? Do you work through the weekend? I feel like I've been working um, a couple weeks, a couple weekends in a row here, so I really need like a binge Netflix day or something. I'm, I'm about ready to that point because I've been work, 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 working. But I tell you, I have a lot of follow-up stuff to do, and so I got to get on that um, because my live event is coming up in like three weeks, um, two weeks. Uh, well, two weeks is the cutoff for the sign-up. So if you're at all interested in coming to join us in LA, we have about 50, 52 people right now signed up uh, down in LA for the Jumpstart Your Business Weekend event. It's three days of working on your business. There is a bonus VIP day uh, on the fourth day. If you want to stay and do a small mastermind with us and really hone your whole plan for 2020, um, I would recommend thinking about attending the event. If you go to Jumpstart Your Biz, B I Z, in a weekend.com, you can find out more about the event, get registered. It's only a couple hundred bucks for three whole days of working with me, which is worth thousands, you guys, because if you think I talk fast here, I don't talk that fast there, trust me. I make sure everybody knows what they're doing. And Barbara's coming, I think. Uh, well, I know Barbara's coming. Um, Jason's going to be there. That's my husband. Thank you. And uh, Pat, you can't come. I know you have so much going on, but I wish you were there. You've been to some previous events. Um, Jill, you've been to events. Reno, you are on my radar, sweetie. You might need to come. You should come, seriously. Uh, Colleen, I don't remember if you're coming or not, but uh, you're. I know we're working together, but um, it'd be good to have you there too. 
And uh, Barbara, thanks, cannot wait, yay. And Joel Orlewin, thanks for joining us, Joe. Uh, anyways, the Jumpstart Your Business Weekend is about so many different things, I can't even tell you. It's about that three-year entrepreneur evolution plan and setting a realistic um, priority list for you of what to do, when to do it, what to say, how to do it in order to really build a multiple six-figure business uh, as and a consistent revenue generating business as soon as humanly possible. We talk about fast cash too, so people are actually making money at my events, so that's super fun. I would love, um, I would love if any of you come, if you haven't been to my events before, you have to come prepared. You have to come prepared with an order form and something to sell because you will make money. I almost can guarantee it. Almost everybody uh, that comes to my events makes money on the spot. It's super fun. Colleen says, yes, me and a friend, I have to sign up. Okay, yes, you do. So uh, let me know if you don't have the link because uh, she gets a complimentary ticket because she's working with me one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want a complimentary ticket, you just have to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And actually, I might even do a complimentary ticket for anybody who just does one call with me right now. If you do one call with me, which isn't that expensive, we can totally brainstorm a whole bunch of stuff for your business. You can come to the event and even take it to the next level. So you'll have to message me below and see if you're interested in that. I'll let you know. I'll private message you. And oh, one last thing, just to put a cherry on the top of the Sunday for my week or my, I would say the last two weeks, is I'm also in Facebook jail. <laughs> So if uh, I'm only in Facebook jail for the purposes of putting any kind of URL on um, on Facebook, and in fact, nobody, none of you would be able to put my website link on Facebook right now, and I'm trying to get them to fix that, and hopefully early next week it'll be fixed, but when you get in Facebook jail, man, it is so hard to get out, I tell you. And there are a lot of bogus phone numbers for Facebook, by the way, because I called one of them and I was suspicious, so I didn't do anything with them. But Facebook, the real people at Facebook, there is no phone number to call at Facebook, so don't get caught up in that as a scam. Um, you have to go through your business page and um, get to the messenger bot to find an actual Facebook person. So just an FYI. Um, and what did I do to get in Facebook jail? Well, I tried running an ad, which, hello, I'm giving you money, Facebook. I tried running an ad for a free webinar <clears throat> and uh, was marketing a free webinar and also uh, giving away a free VIP ticket to my November event. And it was like a contest. I was going to draw a free VIP winner, who Barbara is the winner of that. Um, but the... But we put them into a messenger bot. So if you're familiar with on your business page, you can do a messenger bot where they, you know, click or write, type this word and you'll get this information. And then the guy that set up my messenger bot and my ad, I'm not sure if he knew if he just did something wrong or if all of a sudden I started advertising and doing message bots after 11 or 12 years on Facebook, they kind of red flagged me for some reason. And you know, uh, mark me that way. So anyways, um, I don't know. I don't want to give Facebook any more money. They, <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of the advertising thing. I know a lot of my friends do it, but uh, that is not how I'm going to grow my business, frankly. I like doing these kinds of things and talking to you all and sending private messages and can't wait till I can use my URL again. Yay. So until then, I'll be talking my URL and I'll be putting them on images and things like that. So hopefully you can come to the event. If not, if you really can't come in November to LA, November 7, 8, and 9, uh, then think about joining the International Entrepreneur Network that I run. It's a $7 a month membership and we have calls on Zoom three times a month. Three times a month, it's like the little Brady Bunch where you have a bunch of people on and it's laser coaching, hot seats, masterminding. It's not me talking at you like this. I don't talk a bunch of, I don't talk throughout the whole call. It's masterminding on what people who come to the call need. And so I, um, I recommend that you might check that out. And if you go to iEntrepreneurNetwork.com, the letter I, like international, EntrepreneurNetwork.com, you can find out more about that and join us. And there's a few people that are in the in the chat, in the group, and uh, it's a private Facebook group and then three Zoom calls right now. And we got about 120 people in there, so it's super fun. 
And uh, anyway, so hopefully you're having you're gonna have a great Friday night, a great weekend with your family or friends. And uh, hi, Kim. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. And don't forget to celebrate yourself and what you've all accomplished because you're amazing. And I know you're being productive. And you can only do so much because we're all human. Okay? Have a great night, you guys.